This episode is all about hive configuration. Now that you're interested in keeping bees and you want to put bees into a Langstroth style hive, how should you configure your hive? But before we get into that, I want to share a few things with you. First, these hive styles that you see here are all wooden boxes, but you can also buy plastic boxes, plastic lids, polystyrene boxes. There's lots of materials that people make beehives out of these days. And the same is true for bottom boards and the frames. I tell you all of that to say that you're going to have to make a decision what material you want to use for the construction of your hive. I will say that wood is most common, but there's pros and cons associated with using wood. I'll even point out that there's some discussion about the thickness of the walls of the boxes, where the entrances should be. It's kind of an ever expanding science as people try to optimize the hive environment in which the colony is going to live. But just assume that you're going to start off with a standard wooden Langstroth style hive. Now you have to decide how to configure it. And that sounds really complicated, but it's really just deciding how you want to stack your boxes. It's, it's literally that simple. So let's start from the biology of the bee. In peak season, the queen honeybee in this hive is going to be able to keep up the egg output to keep about 10 frames, deep frames, of brood produced. So as a result, you've got to have at least 10 deep frames worth of space for the brood area. Secondly, the bees will need somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 70 pounds of honey in order to survive throughout the year, depending on the type of inclement conditions they encounter. So that works out to be roughly a medium supers worth of honey. So the hive configuration that I use most is a deep brood box and a medium super of honey. That means to me, my least divisible hive size is a deep brood box and a medium super of honey. This is the bees, it's the bees year round. I never extract the honey from this box, it's always the bees. So when I'm interested in producing honey, I would simply add more medium supers to this box. But there are some drawbacks of this. For example, this deep brood box can be quite heavy. There's lots of bees in here, it's a big box. In fact, it's the biggest of boxes. And it can be difficult for people to work. Furthermore, some people argue that having a brood box in a medium is not quite enough space. So some beekeepers argue that in peak production season, queens can actually outlay 10 deep frames. So having that second box on hand allows the queen to move into that box and lay additional eggs. I personally do not like the queen to be up in that medium super. I like to confine her to one box. It's easier for me to find her on 10 frames than it is to find her on 20 frames. And I tend to make that happen. I tend to restrict the queen using a queen excluder between my medium super and my deep brood box. The queen will be here, the bee's honey will be here, and I know she's not going to move up into this box because I've used a queen excluder. There are lots of beekeepers who do not like queen excluders. In fact, they often call them honey excluders because they believe having that little excluder here will actually reduce the amount of honey bees make. That's never been shown scientifically. I'm not going to argue that you should or shouldn't use a queen excluder. I'm going to argue to you throughout this episode that you need to take the configuration that works best for you and use it for you. For me, I prefer a deep brood box, a queen excluder, and a medium super as my basic configuration. But I will tell you there are some other common configurations that beekeepers use with regularity. For example, this configuration is a hive composed of two brood boxes. In this particular case, there's no queen excluder, so the queen has free reign over two boxes, and you see this a lot with commercial beekeepers, especially in colder climates. Those beekeepers argue that having two boxes that queens can move freely in gives her the space that she needs to lay as many eggs as she wants, and also the empty space in this uppermost box will be filled with honey. If you look back at my configuration, it probably grows the height and therefore the volume of the hive, maybe by 10 to 20%. So bees can expand more in here than they can in here. But I would argue I can produce as many bees and as much honey in this hive that someone can with a double deep. So it's truly about preference. But beekeepers who do this find it convenient to use. They don't like to buy that extra queen excluder because it's just an extra piece of equipment that you may or may not want to invest in. So this is a pretty popular style. 
Increasingly so, people getting into beekeeping are moving away from using these larger boxes because they're so heavy and instead moving to having a configuration composed of exclusively smaller boxes. For example, look at this configuration. This hive gives you two medium supers, which roughly equals about the volume of a single brood box plus about half of the next brood box. And the benefit of two medium supers rather than two deeps or a deep and a medium is that medium supers when full are lighter than deep boxes when full. So some people find that working this configuration of hive is easier because it's lighter. So folks with disabilities or people maybe with an inability to lift these heavy boxes really find this palatable. It's something that they enjoy working and it makes beekeeping very accessible. But even though you are using two medium boxes here, there's still 10 frames in those boxes and those can be quite heavy, which has caused a whole generation of beekeepers to switch to using what we call eight frame equipment. So eight frame equipment, as the name implies, is essentially a box that accommodates eight frames rather than 10 frames. So while these are medium supers and therefore lighter than these deep brood boxes, they still contain 10 frames. But eight frame equipment, which you can see here, would accommodate only eight frames rather than 10 frames. You can buy deep brood boxes, medium supers, shallow supers, lids, bottoms, everything for your eight frame equipment. And some people find this hive even more accessible. The key is you've got to provide the queen at least a deep box worth of area to lay eggs and at least a medium supers worth of honey to survive the year. So however you elect to accomplish that is completely up to you. Make it your own, own it, lean into it, and enjoy beekeeping.